Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to continue to talk about the design principles in Golang. So today I'm going to talk about the interface segregation principle. So what this states is that many client specific interfaces are better than one general purpose interface. So it's better to have multiple number of small interfaces rather than one single big interface. One more way to explain it is that no code should be forced to depend on methods it does not use. An interface aggregation principle splits interfaces that are very large into smaller and more specific ones so that clients will only have to know about the methods that are of interest to them. And so this keeps the system decoupled and therefore easier to refactor. So I'm going to explain that using a couple of simple examples. So here is my first example, which is which breaks the interface segregation principle. So first I have this shape interface, which has an area and volume. And I have two functions here. So one is called area sum, which takes the shape interface and it basically sums the area and returns the sum. And I have another function, which is area volume sum, which calculates the sum of areas and volumes and then returns the sum. Okay. So now we have two structs, one is square, one is cube. So square, as you know, is a 2D structure. So it has a formula for area, but for volume, it's just zero. But for a cube, a cube can have an area like its outer area, which is six times the length square. And it also has a volume, which is the length cube. And I have this main function, which just initializes a couple of uh, structs and simply prints the area sum and the volume sum. So what is the problem here? The problem here is that I have this square struct which has to implement a volume method just so that it can be used in this area volume sum because it only takes shape interface to be able to satisfy the shape interface you have to have area as well as volume function but it doesn't make sense for a square to have a volume method. So how I can change it? I can change it by segregating or dividing this interface into two. So I can have an interface which just has area and that will be useful for uh, shapes which are 2D. And then I, will, I can have another interface which will have area and volume. And that will be more useful for the 3D objects. And then in case of area volume sum, I can use the interface which has both area and volume, not just area. So this is the new code where I have the shape interface which only has this area function, but I have this object interface which has shape and volume. So now the square struct has to implement only the area. I can basically remove this volume function. So the square only implements the area and the cube struct that implements area and volume. Okay. So now the function definitions, they remain the same in case of area sum and area volume sum, but here area volume sum only takes shapes that are of the type object, not shape. So object is the one which has area and volume. So here area volume sum can only take the cube as the input. And if I uh, run the program, it prints the area sum and the volume sum. So why this matters in the grand scheme of things? If I am creating a square, I am only interested in its area. I am not interested in its volume. So if I'm coupling lots of things together, which, uh, which means that if I'm coupling the square and cube into one single interface, like uh, in the case of the first example, then I'm kind of forcing the square struct to implement the volume function, which is not necessary. So if we keep our interfaces simple and segregated well enough, then it is easier to implement new things. It's easier to do refactoring. So as it says here that uh, it is intended to keep the system decoupled and thus easier to refactor. So if I, if instead of square, if I were, were to create a new struct like triangle, so then I will only have to create an area function of a triangle, not area and volume function. So that is easier to refactor or add things or change things or redeploying things. So this is the interface segregation principle. And in the next video, I'm going to get to the last portion of the solid design principle, which is the dependency inversion principle. Thank you.